How to create a custom loop in WordPress using WP Query. This lesson is brought to you by LearnPHP.co, your number one source for online PHP training. It's sponsored by Wishlist Member. Quickly turn your WordPress blog into a membership site. Visit wishlist, wishlistmember.com to learn more. And coderscult.com, an online community for PHP coders. Visit coderscult.com to learn more. And Internet Marketing Inc. For ROI-focused, integrated online marketing solutions, visit internetmarketinginc.com today. Hey there, John Morris here from learnphp.co. And in this video, or this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to create a custom loop in WordPress using WP Query. Now, I decided to put this tutorial together because I see a lot of people still using the query post function in WordPress to create custom loops. And so that is a bad practice because uh, it can mess with uh, the main loop that you have in WordPress and it can cause glitches to occur. And so the way that you really want to, if you're going to create a loop that will exist inside the main WordPress loop, and we'll talk about what that means, but you want to use WP Query for most of, or in those situations, you always want to use it. And for most of your loops that you're going to create, you're, you're just going to want to use WP Query. So I'm going to give you a video tutorial and show you exactly how to do that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just set this up here a little bit. Uh, first off, I want to show you if we head over to the main page of the site, you'll see we have two posts. Both of them are in a category called demo category. And so we're just going to do something simple. All we want to do is we want to create a nice simple list of all the posts from a particular category. So in this case, it'll be our demo category. And if we come back over here, you see that we have that done right here. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Obviously, there's a lot more uh, applications for this particular uh, lesson or this particular skill uh, but that's what we're going to show in uh, this tutorial to keep it nice and simple all right so let's go ahead and head on over to some code here now when we're talking about the loop you may be familiar for from if you're familiar with WordPress you may have seen this before and this is the main WordPress loop and you'll find this typically in template files. Now, uh, the reason that you don't want to use query posts when you're creating custom loops that would be inside of this is because again, this loop has already been created. There's already a query that's been run. Uh, and so you can just cause conflicts between the main query that's already been run by WordPress and of course this main loop. Now, if you want to change what's, what happens to this main loop, that's the situation in which you want to use query posts. Uh, so again, if you're if you're altering the main loop that already exists, then you would use query posts. If you're creating a custom loop uh, inside of this, then you would want to use uh, WP Query. Now, what is the situation where you would do that? Well, if we head on over to our functions file, now I'm just creating this in the theme functions file for simplicity's sake. You could do this in a plugin, you could do it in a theme, uh, wherever essentially, but this is in the theme functions file. So what I've done in order to build our list of posts from a particular category is I've just created a short code. So I have the short code demo custom loop. It's referencing this function demo loop, which is this function right here. Uh, and if we head over to uh, our page here, you'll see that I've placed this short code inside of uh, this page. Okay, so again, when the, when you're doing that, when you're using a short code in this instance, you're going to already have a main query and a main loop that's displaying this page that you've created. And then it's going to display the content inside of that. Well, it so happens that the content for that page is a short code. And in that short code, we're running another loop and creating our list of posts for a particular category. Okay, so we want to use WP Query uh, in this particular instance. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through the code and show you how to do that. So again, I've added the short code. I have a function called demo loop. And inside demo loop, we're just going to do a couple things. So first off, I'm just setting some arguments. So there's a bunch of different arguments that you can set when it comes to WP Query. In fact, we'll come over here real quick 
and we'll, you can take a look. These are the category parameters that I happen to be using for this tutorial. But if you just do a Google search for WP Query, then you'll see this description. And it's going to show you all of the different arguments that you can pass. And if you look over here to the right in this contents, you can see all of the different parameters that you could pass. So there's quite a few different parameters that you can pass to WP Query. Obviously, I'm not going to cover all of these, but you can see so you can do things as far as working with authors. So getting a po list of posts for a particular author, categories, tags. Uh, you can order how the, the results are returned. You can use a search parameter. You can do it by post type, so on and so forth. There's just a bunch of different ways that you can alter the query. So uh, when you go to do this, I mean, whenever I use this, I always come here and just look at exactly what I want to find. And you'll see an explanation of what parameters to use and usually example code. Um, there's really no reason to try and uh, memorize it all or anything like that. Uh, you can use this as a resource uh, when you're doing this. So again, we're using the category parameters. You can see we just want to um, one cat post from one category so we're going to use this cat parameter of course i do it a little different you could do it in a string version like they do here or you can do it as an array uh, and, and key value pairs that's the way i prefer to do it just a little cleaner so you can see i have a key value pair here I have a, a array i created called args and in it i'm specifying the cat which is three and then i'm specifying post for per page and i'm actually gonna just set this to one i'm just doing this to show you uh, a couple different parameters that you could use when doing this. Alright, so we have our post per page set to one. And remember, we had two posts in that category, so when we refresh this, we should only get one uh, listing now. But we'll go ahead and walk through the rest of the code. And so here, I've set up my arguments. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, instantiate a new instance of WP Query, save it into a variable, and I'm going to pass it the args I just created. So essentially, this is going to query WordPress uh, for based off of the arguments that I just passed it. So uh, again, in this case, it's going to default to looking for post. If you specified a post type, then it could it would look for that specific post type, uh, and so on and so forth. But in this case, it's defaulting to post, so it's going to look for posts in cate the category that has an ID of three, and it's going to return us essentially one result. Okay, so we're saving that query. Uh, or that uh, new object as a demo posts variable. Now, you remember we have our main loop over here, and you notice we just use have posts, uh, if have posts, while have posts, the post, and there's nothing, uh, there's nothing, there's no object that this is. These are a method of. That's because it's assumed from uh, the rest of the the query, everything that's happened before in WordPress. In this case, because we're running a new uh, we're instantiating a new instance of this class. We have to use the instance we just instantiated because if we don't, it's going to default to uh, what's in the main query, and we don't want that. So you notice that we're running, we're actually using the same code. All we're really doing is using our object now. So we're using demo posts and have posts while demo posts have posts, and then demo posts the post. So I, I. Uh, did this out like this so you can kind of see exactly how this works. So the first one is an if statement. So essentially that's checking to see if our query there that we created here actually has any posts in it. Okay, so we're just going to have an if statement. If it has posts, and then if it does, while it has posts, so it's essentially going to loop through those posts, uh, then we're going to set up our post data essentially here. And what this allows us to do is now we can use the the standard WordPress functions that you're used to using. So uh, we can use get permalink, get the title. Now I'm doing this inside of a function and returning it in a short code. So when you do that, you have to return the output. Otherwise, it causes weirdness. If you were doing this in a theme file, let's say for example you're creating a custom page template or something, and you're doing this inside an actual theme file where it would be uh, perfectly fine to echo. Uh, the data you could actually do this loop just exactly how you have it here of course using your object that you or yeah, your object that you instantiated um, but you could do it just like this and then just write out your HTML like this 
So you could do it just exactly like this. The only reason I'm not is because I'm inside a function that I'm returning uh, to be used in short code. Okay, but you can still use the exact same uh, functions that you're used to using, like get permalink, get the title, uh, get content. If you're doing it in a theme file like over here, you could use the title like I'm doing here. You could use uh, the content uh, and so on and so forth. So um, that's the advantage of doing this inside of a loop. Obviously, there's also the function get posts in WordPress, which will essentially do the exact same thing as WP query. The difference is, and, and you can set up post data in that, the difference is that this is just a little bit easier to work with and probably something you're a little more used to seeing uh, if you've studied theme files at all. So, uh, again, it's just kind of a more standard way of doing it. But you could use get posts if you wanted to. In any case, uh, again, the advantage here is that you can use the standard WordPress functions inside of here. Okay, so we're just looping through. I'm just creating a simple list here that links to the post. Um, and then we're just returning that output for our short code. Okay, so again, we change that to one uh, post that we should see now. So if we refresh this, you'll see that now we only get one post and we're getting the latest post. Of course, you could reorder that. You can do all kinds of things uh, with WP Query in terms of altering what results get returned and how they get returned and so on and so forth. Okay, so that is a simple explanation of how to use WP Query to create custom loops. Again, you want to do this uh, when you're going to be creating a loop that will exist inside of the main uh, loop and the main query that already uh, that WordPress has already run for a page. So if you're doing page templates, if you're doing short codes and so on and so forth, this is when you want to use that. Um, the only time you want to use query posts is, is if you're altering the main loop that already exists. Now, if you really want to take this training to the next level, then right below this video in the description area, you're going to see a link. And that is a link to the page of my website where this tutorial is embedded. And if you head on over there, you'll be able to get the video download. So you could actually download this video if you need to watch it later or maybe you have a slower connection. You can download the video version. You can download the audio version uh, in case you prefer to just listen to the tutorial. You can also download the source code. I've also created a checklist that will allow you to walk, uh, walk through the step-by-step -step and show you exactly what steps to take. And I've also created an assignment over there for you to actually get out there and do this uh, this particular function and, and make it work. So look at the link below this video, head on over there, get access to all those resources, uh, and get this thing mastered. So again, thanks for watching the video and I'll talk to you later.